Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Nuggets News. In this video, I want to examine some realistic price expectations for Bitcoin. Now, we often read these exaggerated estimates. I'm not one for clickbait. I don't buy into hype. If you followed my work, you know my analysis is based on that bottom-up fundamental style approach. But I want to talk about where Bitcoin fits into the world of technology and investing. Whether we even should be comparing it to the market cap of stocks, forex, or other global financial assets. And if you've followed my work, you know that I think this blockchain, cryptography, encryption technology is a once in a lifetime paradigm shift. We're part of this unique opportunity. I'll talk about where I see this going in the coming years and what's possible. So the market cap of Bitcoin is currently around $100 billion. Let's just use that round number as we move through the presentation and the market cap of all crypto around $170 billion. So if you talk to any fund manager, they'll tell you that tech, tech, tech is the future. Everyone knows that that's where the growth is going to come from as we move forward. So the other day we saw the NASDAQ 100 at $200 billion in market cap in one day. Now just five companies are responsible for that increase in market cap. So you know, you've heard the term FANG stocks, Facebook, Amazon, Netflix, Google, but you know, Apple, Microsoft, these other technology stocks is where these funds and money is flooding into. So hundreds of billion dollars market cap for these companies, Apple approaching a trillion dollars, a long way ahead of where the current Bitcoin market cap stands. So the next thing I want to talk about is the rough ride that this is going to be and what happens in tech stocks is we get these crazy ramps in price and, and big crashes. So it's not going to be an easy ride and when, when you read these headlines about the returns, it doesn't necessarily mean that individuals are getting those. A lot of people that maybe bought Bitcoin on Mt. Gox here at five cents, you know, they, they sold out here or, or when it crashed back down 90%, they get shaken out here when it crashes back down below $2. So it doesn't mean it's going to be an easy ride and that people are necessarily even getting these returns that you read about um, when you see these headlines. So again, Nvidia gets up to $40, big crash back down to $5. This is happening in the real world. It has happened, it will continue to happen. Apple here, um, back in 2000, gets up above $5, crashes down below a dollar. Now these guys have had stock splits and that sort of thing, but we just wanna use these numbers to get an idea of the returns and the corrections that happen in these markets. And again, Amazon, if you happen to get in at a dollar, runs up to 110, are you gonna get shaken out when it crashes back down to $5? So, you know, if you're in at a dollar and you've held it this entire time, it represents absolutely phenomenal returns. I'm in the ballpark of, a, you know, over 100,000%. So, you know, you look at these charts, Warren Buffett's calling Bitcoin a bubble. The fact is we do get exponential growth in these technology style investments. So the next thing I want to talk about is the best returns in history. So Coca-Cola, if you had got in on that IPO, continually to reinvest um, all those dividends and stuff, which is a little bit different to maybe how Bitcoin's having these hard forks and split offs of other coins. But let's just get a you know a, a feel for the return that's possible if you had got in on the ground floor for Coca-Cola, and that's the twenty-four million five hundred thousand percent return. So these huge returns are possible in the real world. I think we're a long way off calling Bitcoin a bubble and that sort of thing. But I don't think we should even be comparing it to the market cap of stocks. So I think Bitcoin, you know, once you understand what it is, the protocol, it's software. We're investing in the internet itself in the early days, okay? We're not buying shares in a company. So that's why I don't think comparing it to the market cap of these stocks is even the best comparison. So. I think Bitcoin is fighting for that currency aspect, you know, Forex reserves. So we see India banning cash, you know, Greek bank shutting down, limiting ATM withdrawals. We've seen, you know, capital controls in China, um, India, these countries have got a billion people, you know, 20 million Bitcoin circulating. If we start to capture those markets, well, let's have a look at what sort of growth we could expect. So this is from June, so the market cap of Bitcoin and crypto is slightly out of date there, but you know, the market cap of gold, physical money and stock markets and all money sloshing around 
is what I think we should be concentrating on. So we start to talk about Forex markets, so foreign exchange markets, if Bitcoin can become a world reserve currency of sorts for international trade and commerce, we start to talk about the trillions of dollars. So, you know, put a few extra zeros on. So let's just have a look at the market cap of different assets. So each of these black squares represents $100 billion, which is basically the size of crypto. So silver there, you guys know I'm a huge fan of silver. So that's cryptocurrency. There's some of those bigger companies we took a look at. The world's richest 50 people. You know, what happens if a few of those decide to buy a large stake in Bitcoin? The market cap has got so much room to grow. So there's that comparison of currency. So again, you know, gold market cap and you know the market cap of all currency around 7.7 .7 trillion we divide that by 20 million bitcoins that gets us a price of three hundred and eighty five thousand dollars per bitcoin and again i think we're going for even bigger than that so the stock market you know the crypto market cap all these unique projects i've covered i think that crypto is going to become a sort of stock market its own investing market as all these projects continue to grow as well so global money supply this is what we're really aiming at our best case scenario you know 90 trillion dollars that would give each bitcoin a price of around 4.5 million dollars so let's say that bitcoin can capture 20 percent of global money supply that gives us a million dollars per bitcoin and again if we want to go into global debt those numbers start to get staggering you know real estate markets derivatives you know this is scary some of the estimates are up to a quadrillion dollars and that puts each bitcoin price you know in the, in the millions of dollars or thousands of millions of dollars so you know i don't think we're going to get anywhere near that big but i just want to show you that this is how much money is sloshing around the world in these different asset classes debt markets forex reserves and that's what i think is possible so you know this is all best case scenario stuff we're assuming that governments don't outlaw bitcoin or cryptocurrency issue their own you know, there's going to be corrections along the way. As we've seen, 80, 90% corrections have already happened in Bitcoin. They may continue to happen. So it's not going to be an easy ride, but hopefully I've painted you a picture about what is possible for the market cap of cryptocurrency, its limited supply, how much money is sloshing around the world that continues to increase with the way that central banks are printing money at the moment. So maybe it is possible that we see a million dollar bitcoin in the coming years so thanks for tuning in guys please hit like subscribe if you haven't already share these videos around and as always thanks for tuning in guys cheers